And we are live. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Fresh Fit Podcast, man. It's Money Monday. Uh, oh, hold on. Are we lagging? Yeah, there, there oh, you go. Okay, I think we're back. Sorry we're about good. that, guys. Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome to uh, welcome to Fresh Fit Podcast, man. It's Money Monday. We're here with ATM together, man. Uh, no intro on this one. Just a quick announcement. Uh, guys, rumble.com slash fresh to fit. Castleclub.tv, which we're going to put that up on the screen here in a second. Uh, as you guys know, any if we get canceled or anything else like that, you'll know exactly where to find us. Home base is rumble.com slash fresh and fit, as well as castleclub.tv. Um, but yeah, we got two special guests in the house, man. Team together, man. Yo, welcome back, welcome guys. Back. Uh, what's going on, guys? What's Down up, fellas? Marco, Marco. It's been a while. So uh, we know who you guys are, but they may not. Tell us who you are, real quick. Yeah, absolutely, guys. Uh, my name is Paul Alex. I'm a eight-figure entrepreneur. Basically, came from being a cop, seven years detective, all that fun stuff, into serial entrepreneurship. Yeah, my name is Getum, uh, seven-figure entrepreneur, <laughs> still growing, but uh, came from uh, the Marine Corps straight to uh, law enforcement, got out, invested in a few things, and, you know, running some businesses now, so. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember nice. you guys, your story was amazing because back in the day, you guys met actually in the force, and you're doing separate jobs, basically. Yeah, bro. We were working in the same department. We worked at Oakland, California. Um, Crazy-ass city. It's like Iraq. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I was a detective. He was a sergeant. I mean, we we always uh, in, in passing by, we always like greet each other and all that jazz. But then I got into entrepreneurship. I mean, luckily he came into my office one day and he was just like, "Hey, bro, what are you up to?" And I was just like, "Hey, dude, just working on my side hustle." And he was just like, "Oh, that's interesting. Keep it going." He was like one of the only positive people that like I worked with that actually pushed me to entrepreneurship. Mm. Everybody else was like, "Bro, what are you doing? You cop." Stay like, safe. You yeah, know, stay pension, safe. Everything. Like pension, everything. Like that's it's out of your reach. And uh, basically, after I put in my two weeks, bro, three months later, I was eating like six figs in in one of my businesses, and I was just like, hey, bro, you want to come over and run operations because you're a sergeant, so you you know how to like you know manage people, and that's what I need. I need an operator, mm -hmm. and I'm more of like the visionary. I'm like, all right, cool, we're gonna try this, we're gonna do this, right? And mm -hmm. then he's more of like, all right, cool, let me handle the logistics, right? Operations plan and all that. Yeah. So so that's that's basically our relationship man now we're here we built multiple businesses together um he uh, as you guys are going to know in the next couple minutes after we talk about the whole btm thing uh start getting into credit card terminals but he's now a co-founder and you know nice. uh essentially i told him I, you know i shared the vision with him on this venture which you guys will know in a couple minutes mm -hmm. but uh i had told him i was like hey bro if you put in the work for my first company like you take care of it like it's yours yeah I'm gonna hook you up with the next project I'm gonna work. Cause I already knew what I was going, man. Like I just, I had the blueprint in my head. I invested in myself and I just went out there and got it. Like no one can tell me the difference uh, of what I can do or where I'm limited to do. So now I got three different companies. He's co-founder of one and hey, we're just working, bro. That's it. That's a lot of trust, man. Yeah, a teamwork. And, and I also th think it's really important that uh, the, the kind of the audience understands. So, like, you were doing criminal investigations, right? Yeah. Uh, you were a detective, which means you were doing it. So, you guys, you were in your own kind of in the detective side. And then you were a sergeant in the uniform guy, uh, situation. So, you had people that were working under you. Think yeah. of guys as sergeant a lot of times for a police department is like a first line supervisor. So, you'd have four or five guys on patrol that basically would be under you. And then you probably would have, as a detective, you're kind of your own boss. You're, uh, you know, working kind of. You're on hours working with another squad of detectives. You might have one supervisor that helps you with your case or whatever, but in general, you're managing your own time. So um, how, how'd you guys like, because cause you guys were like in different like uh, parts of the de department, in the police department, how'd you guys like, actually meet up? Yeah, it wasn't until after I came back from a narcotics task force. I was undercover for like about three years, targeting uh -huh. straight cartel, worked a lot with uh, HSI, the feds and mm -hmm. all that. That's why, you know, when uh, you would bring up your law enforcement, I almost shed a tear, bro, yeah. because I still remember my counterparts out there in the San Francisco Bay Area and shit. Of course. Yeah. And um, I did a lot of ops with them. But once I came back to the department, I went to special victims unit. And when uh -huh. I went to special victims unit, guess what? The sergeant's got to review the officer's reports. So some of these reports would come back fucked up. As you know, we yeah. gotta write a lot of paper, uh, a lot of reports, and I'd be like, hey, like, what, what's going on with this report, man? Like, mm. they missed the elements of the crime. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is gonna get thrown out. We gotta put this guy away, you mm. know? And uh, it's for serious crimes, like, you know, rape, uh, child molesting, all that. Yeah. The worst of the worst, bro. Scum mm. of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. And he would come in and be like, all right, I got oh, special victims you. Exactly, yeah. special victims you. <laughs> and he'd come in, I got you, P. I'm gonna take care of this. And he'd go over there and like crucify the officer and be like, hey, bro, what the hell? How long you been an officer for? You know, you gotta uh, do your shit right. Uh, and then, yeah, because you know, the first responding guys have to write a report. Yeah. yeah so, okay. I, I, okay. I get what you're saying. It, it's just so the audience understands. Like, so, like, if a police officer shows up and finds out that, you know, a kid was abused or whatever it may be, they might not necessarily do the investigation, but they're absolutely writing their part of, hey, I, I showed up. I was a guy. 911 call. I showed up, blah, blah, blah. And, 
if it doesn't make if if they don't if they're not able to establish like how they were able to get the probable cause to search or how they were able to do X Y Z, yeah, that could fuck up everything else because the investigator is going to take the case and he can't build upon the case if the foundation is fucked up. Which a lot of times the uniform guys set the foundation mm. exactly. So and it's okay key, that makes it, sense and it's key with major crimes, man, homicide, shootings, all that jazz. That's why they got you know on a, on a major scene like a murder or something like that, they'll lock down the street with like twenty officers. Yeah. Look yeah. at all the cameras, you know, due diligence, and then you got the detectives going in there. And all those guys got to write a report and Every- give it to the detective because a lot of times yeah. they're the first ones there. They have to write what they saw, what led them to, you know, discover the body or whatever. And if it's fucked up how they found it, that messes your case up. Yeah, bro. And I mean, like, <laughs> it, it, it worked a perfect role with me being in that position, especially in law enforcement, because I'm such an outside thinker. Uh-huh. Like, I'm very creative. So I'm like wait a minute, did that dude just slipped up and tell me that he was there mm. after he told me he wasn't there? Yeah. You know, I catch yeah. shit like that all the time. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's that's basically how we met. So, so he that's was how y'all met. Yeah. Because, so his officers would show up at crime scenes, write a fuck the reports, and you basically like, hey man, get your... <laughs> well, it wasn't always fucked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we like yeah, to blame yeah, the detectives. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. They, 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 like, a lot of patrol guys just aren't good writers. I mean, I get it. So, like, they're more, you know, like, they're not used to... There's a difference between, like, writing a report you know, to talk about what happened versus writing a report as a part of an ongoing investigation. Mm, it's a big right. difference. Oh, so yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, um, man. So so we got into uh, basically business together, uh, launched the whole ATM, cash ATMs, went to 30 locations, uh, became financially free, and then I stopped working a lot of overtime. I was working 60 to 100 hour work weeks back when I was in the department, and that, that now allowed me to just work the standard 40. Which I was super grateful for, bro, because yeah. I, 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 dude, I was killing myself. Mm-hmm. I was killing myself yeah. for almost, I think, six years at that time. And um, I was just like, dude, like, mm-hmm. I lost a seven year relationship. You know, um, I was barely seeing my families. And I, as you guys know, because you guys are family guys, like, my parents, they're everything for me, bro. Yeah. Like, they came into this country, immigrant, Peruvian, Mexican, and they work hard. You know, they work hard. So for, for me now, I take care of them. Like, I'm the protector of my family. Mm-hmm. That's my why. That's why, like, I, I'm, I'm about getting money, but everything is for them. If they're good, I'm good, bro. Yeah, I right. don't need You retired your parents, right? Yeah, I yeah. retire my parents. I give them a salary. You know, if they want to come down here now that I'm in, in Miami, I fly them out. I fly them out. Yeah, mom, you can stay as long as you want. One-way ticket, and you can leave whenever you want. That's isn't just it, the way it is. Isn't it funny, whenever we bring people on the podcast... And I'm moving here. I don't know why, though. Yeah, but yeah, I'm moving yeah. here. It's a pattern we see. Yeah, yeah. Pretty common here. Bro, well, California, I mean, we could talk about that a little bit. Um, I mean, what, what prompted the move to, to Florida? I mean, I've been a very harsh critic of California, and I've told people forever to get the hell out of there. I think me and you had some discussions about it as well. I said, hey, man, get the hell out of there. You know, I don't know if it was me that, that or us, which I'm not going to be that zealous. Like, it was just us. But, like, what made you, what prompted you to get out of California? No, bro, I think after the first episode, you have sparked my interest. You're like, yeah, bro, no state income tax. You know, the, the real state out here is cheap yeah. and all that. And I was already considering, like, Arizona, Texas, you know, all the major states that, you know, uh, real estate was uh, not as inflated. Not as bad, yeah. Yeah, not as bad. And, you know, I work remote. So my ATMs are self-established. I got employees that fill them. I got the BTMs, which, you know, they're, they're fully passive. And now I got the credit card machines, which is fully remote. So I'm making money, dude. Either way, wherever I'm at. And I started, you know, doing online digital marketing as well, yeah. which is that's digital nomad, right? But at the end of the day, like, yeah, I decided to move here because of state taxes. Okay. State taxes was number one. Yep. But then two, bro, look, at this stage of the game in my life, I want to be able to, like, check out all the, the entire world so why not yeah. I've, I've never lived in florida yeah. so why yeah. not yeah. you know yeah. and just like we were talking before bro i bought a piece of property if it don't work out in two years guess what i just rent it out i yeah. rent it out and then i go go somewhere else and that's it you simple. know yeah simple dude i'm mm. a simple guy yeah no same um and, and I, I i really do i mean everyone is moving to either florida or texas arizona is a big one as well yeah. Um, yeah, people are just getting out of these blue states, man. I don't hate to make it political, but that's really what it comes down to. Entrepreneurs, guys that are higher earning, it's really if you're making, you know, over 150k a year, it's in your best interest to get the hell out of a blue state. Yeah, it's really especially not. California. Yeah, especially. <laughs> yeah, man. Because I mean, uh, you said you're uh, San Fran is like one of the most expensive cities in the United States, and then on top of that, like if you're in LA, I know. And correct me if I'm wrong here, guys. You get an LA tax, a county tax, a state tax, and a federal tax. Yeah. So you're getting taxed yeah. four times. Bro, 
I, I don't even want to <laughs> say how much like, I paid what? in state income tax last year, bro. But basically, I could have bought a house over here wow. in, in Florida. That's how much they taxed me, and it hurt yeah. so bad, bro. Because I was yeah. just like, really? We work hard? This hard, right? Not not only as a, as a W-2 uh, employee, you work hard, but then as an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. if you start making, you know, a massive amount of, of uh, income, dude, they're going to try to get you either way it comes. But... I am, I am going to tell you this, yeah. being an entrepreneur, you do have the leverage. Yeah. You do have the leverage with write-offs. You do have of the course. leverage with yeah. business expenses. So that was to my benefit yeah. uh, as well. Yeah. You know? Um, no, absolutely. And I, and I think, I think Florida is definitely going to be one of the frontiers, but it's, yeah, it's, it's, but, uh, it's getting up, going up in price now too, because everyone's, everyone's like, kind of like Miami used to be, I've always said it, Miami used to be like the best kept secret. I remember when I first moved here in 2018, you could get an apartment in Brickell, a one bedroom for well under two thousand bucks. You can get one for like you a one bedroom, one bath. I was paying seventeen hundred dollars. I was paying seventeen hundred for a, uh, an apartment down the street in Brickell, and I was like, "Wow, this is actually really cheap." Because what people didn't realize is that when people think Miami, they think Miami Beach. Everyone goes to Miami Beach. No yeah. one actually comes to the city of Miami and parties. And there's two different things, guys. So, like when I came and I saw how cheap it was, I was like, "Wow!" But then the pandemic hit. And, you know, all the New Yorkers started coming down here and realizing, whoa, hold on. You're telling me I can get an apartment here for under 2000 a, a month and I could be view. with a waterfront view yep. and a parking spot, whatever. And I'm paying ten k to live in a closet in Manhattan. Fuck this. <laughs> so they all came down in droves and it just fucked up the real estate market. But g- it was good for me from a landlord, landlord perspective because I was able to raise rent. But then, yeah, rent went up significantly. So I was like, whatever. So this is Money Monday, man. Oh, yes. Right? Last thing you guys were on the podcast, you spoke about your story, you know, making money with ATMs and sorry, BTMs. But you gave Myron... Yes, machine. Yes, I want to know personally speaking because I'm I'm gonna want one now. <laughs> what does he make you know, bro? Yeah. Tell me the details. Uh, and I'm sorry about that. I got so I got sidetracked with the law enforcement yeah. talk. Um, yeah, guys, as you guys know, um, I went ahead and I partnered with um, ATM together. Which thank you guys for being so gracious and uh, giving me an ATM. Uh, basically, I got a Bitcoin ATM through them, and uh, we monitored basically we monitored progress for a couple of months. And you know, we were gonna do a show earlier. I think we we're gonna do on like. Last month or the month before, but like you know what? Let's wait it out. Let's give the people a little bit more, more time, time so that we can give you all a body of work. Um, and I will actually be, like I said before, I've been very transparent with you guys about everything, right? And I'm gonna actually pull up the chart of exactly how much money I made, and you guys are gonna see it. So it's, Live it's all on out here. there, and uh, you're gonna explain. I'm just gonna explain to you guys everything because I'll be honest with you. I looked at it, and I was like, okay, I don't understand this, but <laughs> Bro, can you explain it? <laughs> and if you guys remember the second pod that we jumped on, I mean, like when Getem started talking about the BTMs, just like the the audio was just like BTMs, yeah, man, scam, scam, yeah, scam, yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. I don't yeah. believe in that. I don't believe in that. But of then course. they showed a lot of love when you you sent that video out, bro. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that selfie. We were like, yeah. damn, I got it like that. Yeah, 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 like the, so haters many, yeah. the haters came out. The haters came out. So so many people were like, and, and, yeah, Byron. And here's the thing too guys like i said i told y'all before i get it man like you're what you're on the internet you're look you're watching a podcast you got some guys on here talking about yo you could make money with bitcoin atms or cash atms blah, blah. i can see why a lot of you guys would be skeptical so 100%. i was like you know what i'm gonna fucking do it and you guys and i'm gonna be very transparent i'm gonna show you guys everything and we're gonna show you guys how we made money certain months and maybe other months were up other months were down etc because that's what it is man it ebbs and flows right yeah and uh be super transparent. If you guys, you know, want to take the plunge and do it, awesome. If you don't, then it is what it is. But I figured, you know what? I'm going to do it so y'all don't necessarily have to take the risk. I'll take the risk first. So, um, And I'm pretty happy with the results, uh, especially given that I didn't do shit. <laughs> like, I totally <laughs> didn't do a damn thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, these guys pretty much helped me with everything, and they set it up and everything. You really are hands off 100%. The only thing you got to do is, like, fill out the paperwork in the beginning, yeah. and then they have a guy go out. Put it at the location. We had an issue with a guy actually where the first location, the vendor was kind of a dickhead. Yeah. Yeah. He he uh, he he literally we put we installed it and then like a week later he changed his mind. Like, I don't want to hear blah blah. And you know they handled it. They they yeah. literally like okay we're gonna find a lo- another location. They took care of all of it. Oh wow. Yeah yeah. Which that happens right? That's life. Like but you know vendors a lot of times. I mean and you can speak to, speak to that a little bit better. Yeah, as far as like vendors, it's really entrepreneurship at the end of the day, right? Like yeah. what can go wrong will go wrong sometimes, right? And if you're not gonna have skin in the game, something's gonna happen, right? So the way we look at it is like let's make it as simple as possible. Let's make it simpler, faster, and easier for a normal nine to fiver entrepreneur that wants to get into a business get into it without having to deal with a lot of the headaches, right? And that's what we try to do, just make it simple. Yeah, everything is outsourced. Mm-hmm. They, they, they handle everything. Really, all you do is you fill out the paperwork and everything else like that, and then they find the place, they put it, they got a contracting company that comes in and installs it, all that. So yeah. this is actively passive income. 
on the go. It really is. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. All right. It really, it is. really is. It's first of its kind. I mean, our biggest competitor, Bitcoin Depot. Yeah. Mm. And the, the, they just went public on NASDAQ like a couple months ago. Oh. They even went on to say on record, bro, that on average, one of their BTMs, they have like, what, 3,000? Yeah. 3,000 BTMs nationwide make $7,000 a month. They so a, they're trying to buy out the smaller companies right now because they see the vision. It, it, I didn't know this until two days ago. Ferrari just started accepting crypto. Bitcoin, oh, wow. yeah. Bitcoin, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What does that tell you right there? Yeah. That That's huge. anybody that got money is investing into crypto. I have friends. They only buy their cars with Bitcoin. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It is crazy, Full, full by the way. Paid off. Yeah. I, I believe it, man. I, I believe it too. I mean, yeah. I've been saying it forever. Um, you know, crypto is the future, and I'm a and I'm a biased real estate guy. I, I you know wholeheartedly admit all the time that I'm a biased real estate guy. But you know, I'd be foolish to not acknowledge that there's other asset classes that can absolutely make you money. You know, I do think Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrency in general is going to be the future, especially as you know we continue with all this conflict. Like guys, right now we're probably going to go into World War Three here sometime soon, bro. Yeah. I mean, what's going on with uh, what's going on in the Middle East? Obviously, you got the Russia Ukraine conflict. It, it, bro. Not to mention the dollar value is already shit right now. Yeah, and then yeah. it's gonna be even worse. And then you got these guys, bricks, like conspiring to try to topple the U.S. dollar. Yeah. Like th there's gonna be a lot of instability in the next few years, man. Yeah, by far. So it's, it's it, you know this next election is gonna be very important. But that's a whole other. Make some money now, man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um. Cool. But uh, yeah. So I guess we want to pull up the chart and then show the people. Yes, pull it up. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, guys, rock. what you're about to see here is um, my Bitcoin ATM's performance. Um, over the past few months, okay, the ups and downs, everything, and we're gonna explain the. Uh, again, I'm just gonna explain to you guys the numbers because I don't know what I'm looking at here. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we'll go ahead. Do we want to start uh, in the beginning? Uh, scroll down a bit here. I don't think the screenshots are in order, but yeah, I saw some comments order, asking. They're like, hey, "Is it a vending machine?" But it's it's super simple broker concept, right? You're just okay. the middleman buying and selling crypto. You're the one owning the actual machine that handles it. That's it. Okay. Go to the first month. Uh, if you can. Which one? Uh, I guess we'll start with June. Yeah. Cause you, All right. So June. Yeah, yeah, you had just installed in June. So yes. a really good month. So the biggest thing, right? Because what we like to say is like the first six months is like oh, what we call the ramp up period. And it sounds very technical, but to keep it super simple, because I was in the Marine, I got I to gotta keep it simple. There's a reason yeah. why they say front towards the enemy with claymores, right? We got to keep it simple. Hmm. So it's like you go to like a, like a badass taco truck. You just found out it's really good. And you're, like, you're telling all your friends. And then six months later, finally, when people start kicking in, they start seeing it, it becomes more popular, then it's a spot to be at, right? right. So mm -hmm. it's a big thing with these is that for the first few months, you're going to see it slower and you might see some changes in like profit, mm -hmm. but you start investing in marketing, yep. marketing at the end of the day. Right. Yep. So with this, you're seeing in June, it's a, I think you made about, it's like $2,000 total to yeah. get a profit on the side. Yeah. So the machine itself sold like about some, I'm squinting, man. My, my vision's like terrible, yeah. but it's like 12 grand in there. Yeah. So you're charging people 20% to actually use that machine. So someone's actually putting cash in there. Mm -hmm. So you see somebody put in like uh, 8,600, you charge them 20%. So they're yeah. getting their crypto on their wallet or they're printing out an actual receipt from the machine, but you're actually keeping that 20% of the profit from there, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. So it's a broker concept, middleman, super simple. You don't care if the price goes up or down, you're just the one profiting on the middle. Yeah. Right? So um, I'm seeing here the first one is 515 profit, then 500 bucks, 499, and then 1,432. Yeah. Um. In June. And sorry, guys, for the like. It's. I know it's a little crappier quality, but like this is a screenshot that we grabbed uh, from from the thing. So I know it's not the clearest, but this is actually what it is. Um. Th this is what uh, happened in June, and then we can go to July. Um. And then. Uh, so here, what? What is that? One sixty. Yeah. So, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um. This one, obviously, like I said, guys, it ebbs and flows, right? So like one month you might make a bunch, and then another month you might not make as much, right? Um. And, and sorry, you were gonna say something. Yeah, so it's real simple. It's like this is June was the first month it was installed. So yeah. we say for the first six months, it's what we call the ramp up period yep. in the industry that people understand that people need to know the machine is there. Like the best example I can mention is that taco truck. Mm. Even the even if there's a Whole Foods at a new at an actual new neighborhood, mm. people need to find out that the actual store is over there for people to start going, start increasing the traffic. So the big thing we focus on is marketing. 
Yeah. It's huge. It's absolutely huge because if people can't see you, they're not going to use you at the end of the day with your machine. 100%. So like, we keep it simple. The way we looked at it was like, all right, how can we make this as simple as possible for the average person to own this business? So we make our machines bright. We actually have like orange wraps. So people, when they walk in, they see what the hell is this big machine with the kiosk over here. Mm -hmm. And then the big thing is Google, right? You guys ever heard of this thing called Google? Oh, I mean, yeah. You want to tell them about the Google marketing that we did on mm -hmm. the side for this? Real yeah. Quick? So yeah, please. It's huge. Guys, right? pay attention. This is really important shit what he's about to say. It, it's like this, right? <laughs> Whenever you look for anything where do you go you don't go to ask Jeeves, you don't go to yahoo you go to google right so the way we look at it is we look at the in terms of the customer the customer themselves yeah. so if a customer is looking to actually find a bitcoin atm where are they going to look so we target all those places we do facebook ads we do actual uh, google advertisements so when people are actually looking for bitcoin atm near me yours pops up first you'll see that ranked listing on top mm -hmm. it's the same thing when you're looking for like a cash atm same mm -hmm. thing you say like hey where's the atm near me you're not looking up your bank you're looking up the type of machine it is mm -hmm. so we invest heavily on google advertising for your machine bam you're right because honestly speaking if i want to search up bitcoin atms google and look for the nearest one to me yep and yep. it'll come right up mm -hmm. uh so let's pull it back up so july a little bit of a slower month now we go into august right yeah um so august here guys uh you see um 344, 1384, and then 501. And those are the those are the transactions that uh, where, where we got our cut, essentially, right? How much work did you actually do yourself when this nothing, was set up? Dude. Absolutely nothing. All I, the most work I did was I filled out the paperwork in the beginning. To, um, you know, which is all, by the way, it's all DocuSign. This is Nothing's somebody's rent paper. that you're making, by the way. Yeah. Somebody's rent for the month. Yeah. yeah. Passively. So, yeah. And I, didn't, I did absolutely nothing, guys. I'm not kidding around. Like, the money just hits the bank account, and it's like, oh, what's this? And then you're like, oh, okay. So... You, you know what's crazy? So uh, and it's all DocuSign. You don't even fill out real paperwork. It's like DocuSign on your phone, sign, boom, 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 done. So two years ago, my invested in crypto, right? And I was yep. like, man, I don't know, bro. You know, I'm gonna wait and see what happens. Guy made like 70k. He put on internet. <laughs> <laughs> he put on internet. Yeah. I put on internet. Right? I'm like, he made a lot of money. Yeah. So I did it too as well. Made some money about a watch. But now you're making money with this, bro. I got yeah, it's just too, on bro. the side. Yeah, I got to do too. I've been told you, man. <laughs> Yo, yeah, listen. Yeah. So this, this is, is August. August is a bit is a, is a bit better, right? Uh, so, and then you go into September, not that okay. much, yep. right? And then you go uh, to October so top. far. So we've made about 700 bucks so far, up to up to today, right? Yep. Up until now. But I can't believe 20% is what you're taking. That's that's a big chunk. It's, Holy. Yeah. yeah, it's typically like 20 to 25% that we're charging people. Damn. And, the, and the biggest reason why, bro, mm -hmm. is because of convenience. Mm. Think about it like that. What did COVID cause Americans to get used to? Instant gratification. Yeah. Uber Eats, Amazon. Instacart, Amazon. Yeah. You know, Amazon then push it to the limit and mm -hmm. they get deliveries in one day. Mm -hmm. So everybody's just like, I want it now, you know? So with BTMs, how long do you have to wait in an online exchange? Could be days. Days, bro. Mm -hmm. Time is money. We know that. Mm -hmm. We got to move something for a Ferrari. <laughs> so at the end of the day, man, I want my money now. Yeah. Right? That's why you go to a BTM. Yeah. That's the primary reason. Yeah. And in the future, in quarter one, quarter two, we're already talking to manufacturers. You're charging man. that for convenience and speed. Bro, that's, that's what you're charging that's them That's all it is. And it goes back to the traditional concept of cash ATMs. Yeah, yeah. People are like, who uses cash anymore? Bro, if you're at a strip club, if you do go to strip clubs, I mean, I know a couple people that do. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> whatever, me, bro. but whatever, <laughs> I, I'm like this. Good <laughs> day. Is that no. you too? I don't know what you're talking about. We, we had dinner the other night at, at Perry's, man, and uh, he was just like, hey, bro, Tootsies? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I, no. I got to work, Ellis no. Sydney. Come on, man. Don't, no face, don't, no case. Don't nope. do that to me. <laughs> don't do that to me. Yeah. But no, we go back to the traditional method of what works. Yeah. Yeah. We go on foundation, man. Mm -hmm. We were like, we had a bulletproof system yeah. with cash ATMs. Yeah. Why not implement the same thing with BTMs? Yeah. And it worked flawlessly, man. Yeah, you got to refine a couple things. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, man, our clients are loving it. And we're just growing and growing. Yeah. And That's what it comes down and, to. And, and guys, again, 100% transparent. One, like in the month of September, six bucks. As you saw, I made another like $166. Yeah. Like you're not always going to make the most money. If anything, if I was making thousands upon thousands, Y'all be like, ah, oh, this is skeptical. This is a scam. Yeah. But no, I'm showing y'all the truth. This is what it what I made. But you gotta remember, number one, I didn't do shit. Absolutely nothing. The money just comes in. In four to five months, I made a couple thousand dollars doing yeah. nothing. That's so it's crazy. like, you know, you could actually use that extra money to, to reinvest it. You could use it to go and do something that you otherwise wouldn't want to use your earned income on. This is passive income, guys. 100 percent passive income. So Again, like I said before, being 100% transparent with y'all, not every single month I'm going to be making thousands upon thousands of dollars, but I definitely made a few thousand in a few months for doing nothing. So yeah. that's the reality, man. If it was anything else, y'all should be kept skeptical. But those are the real numbers right there, man. But this is a scam, right? 
Yeah, it's apparently a scam. It's a scam. <laughs> okay, cool. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. <laughs> you. If, if it was a scam, no one would share their results with y'all like that, man. But you guys, you guys know I'm very transparent with everything. Every month is up and down. But already for the month of October, like September, we did shitty. But October, we're probably gonna break a thousand bucks. So, and we're only midway month because we ran that report. I think uh, two or three days ago. So you made like, what six, seven k already? Uh, like a couple, like three or four thousand, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, in a few months. So, hey, bad. man. And here's the thing: they told, they said it from the beginning. Like, hey, you're gonna make somewhere between one hundred to a thousand dollars a month passively, which is r- roughly. I what can it only is. imagine if you add marketing like all the way on that. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You did it yourself as yeah, well. Yeah, you could have said we hey, weren't guys. running Google ads like crazy either. Right. If I ran Google ads, we could have made more. If I ran way more Google ads. Damn. So. Oh yeah. Sauce, oh, yeah. man. Oh yeah. So you ready? <laughs> Actually, yeah. I told you. Hit the, man- the manager of the uh, place I told you about. So yeah. No, we and then, we got you after. Yeah. And then there's something else exciting that we were talking about. So um, you you could talk, tell us about it. Like you had a meeting concerning yeah. these BTMs and how they can be converted for other uses. Yeah. So quarter one, uh, quarter two, it's coming. We're already uh, speaking with one of the largest manufacturers that's working on an all in one. When I when I mean all in one, all in one, we're talking about cashing in checks. We're talking about uh, being competitors directly with Western Union and MoneyGram, mm-hmm. where you're going to be able to deposit and people are going to be able to send money to their family. Yeah. I mean, I've done, I've done it dozens of times, got family in Peru, got family in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, but not only that, but they're also trying to work out a deal with DraftKings, bro, mm-hmm. where people are going to be able to place bets on these machines. Oh, shoot. So a true all in one and they got different models that they're like hey guys what do you guys think would push more to your market because i mean for the online space atm industry btm industry we're getting up there man we're not the biggest mm-hmm. we're not we're, we're not the massive company but we're getting there where the big guys are noticing us and that's why we were able to land this meeting and they were like dude would you be able to make this work i was like it's a no-brainer Hmm. Who wouldn't want to make a percentage off of cashing in checks hmm. to uh, to actually go in and transferring money to the Bitcoin to uh, just standard cash, standard cash. ATM? Yeah. Bro, so it's an ATM that one. does everything essentially. That yeah. does everything, and, and that's the future. Bro. And if you have a BTM already, is just converting it over to de- have these capabilities. Well, that's the good thing about the BTM, bro. You're able to upload all the updates on there. Oh, because it's wow. all software. It's all software. <laughs> okay. It's a oh, big computer wow. screen. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's amazing, man. It's amazing. We got a lot of things coming up. A lot of things in the pipeline. We've been working just, yeah. just hard. We took basically the culture that we learned from law enforcement, and we just doubled down on entrepreneurship, bro. So that's it's, it's merely did. software. So if you have a cash ATM, you would have to probably upgrade over to a, a, a BTM. Yes. To to, to be able so, to have these. New features because I'm assuming a cash ATM strictly for cash, it's probably older um, technology, the right? The price difference is also dramatic between a cash ATM and then also a BTM. A BTM is going to be low five figures, a cash ATM is going to probably be around like $2,300. Mm-hmm. So it's dramatically oh, it's really... different because of all the software, bro. Oh, oh yeah, cash so, ATMs so are cheap, bro. Uh, you could get one for $2,300. You could get one for $2,300, but here's the thing there's more to it than just the machine. Yeah. You need the network. The biggest thing is the location. I could tell everybody this, like I used to be in corporate America for six years before law enforcement. The only reason why I had that little uh, step, I guess, above everybody else to go land my own locations is because I knew how to talk to people, you know, soft skills. Mm -hmm. I'm an old millennial, dude. So at the end of the day, I was able to go there, I relate to like, you know, the small um, mom and pops uh, business owner. And I was able to go ahead and and form foundation. So um, yeah, that's why I was able to scale to 30 ATM so quickly while I was still working my nine to five. So That's a skill that most people don't have, by the for, way. For the audience, right? Because um, some of, so there, and here's the thing: I want to make this very clear for all the guys out here that are that are watching. Like, guys, you're not going to get rich off of having ATMs. Mm. What what you need to do is have a job, make that money, and invest it so that you can make some passive income on the side. And then, if you do this for long enough, you can absolutely turn this into a 10k a month. 100k a year side endeavor for sure. I can see if you have multiple ATMs, you become rich. Yes, multiple. And that's what yeah. Paul did. Like you, like you took your salary from your job, uh, your active income from being a detective. Blood money. And, uh, yeah, exactly the blood money, right? The, <laughs> that over the, that overtime, and you invested into the ATMs. And then, at what point did you realize that okay, I can literally leave this job? How many ATMs did you have at that point? Thirty. You had thirty ATMs, and yeah. that's when you said, okay, I can literally quit if I want to. Well, I was making fifteen k 
and I had two employees part time. One was on call. They would just go fill up my machines twice a month. And then the other one was a tech. And that was the first tech I actually employed uh, with my first couple of ATMs because I just never wanted to go ahead and actually install it myself. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, I keep it real. And uh, I just kept them employed. So he would go do the maintenance. I'll pay him a couple hundred dollars whenever it happens because ATMs are so durable, bro. Yeah. They don't break down, especially when you buy new. I would say uh, when you're new, buy new. Gotcha. You don't want to deal with all the tech and upgrading yeah. and ADA compliance and all that shit. You want to just set it and forget it, right? Yeah. Um, but, hey, man, interesting subject that you had said on my Instagram, man. I always get all asked all the time. They're like, hey, bro, how, do you, how did you guys reach the level of success that you guys did? And I was just like, work, save, and invest. Yeah. And then the second thing that comes into play, I always tell people, you know what? If I was 21... And I had a, either a GED or a high school diploma, I would just go ahead and try to be a cop. Why not? Go mm -hmm. be a cop. You could be a six-figure hero. Go work overtime. And, and mind you guys, this is not for the lazies. Okay? So if the yeah. lazies are listening to me, you're going to hate me when I say this, but we don't want you. Okay? So if you're proactive and you're going to work hard, you can work a limited overtime yeah. at any police agency. If you guys didn't know... Just in California, you can easily make a quarter of a million dollars a year. We knew guys, OGs, yeah. that, mind you, they were like divorced, had hella kids and all that shit, mm. but they were making half a million dollars a year. It all comes down to blood money. Yeah, it is blood money. And yeah. most people won't believe this yeah. because they're stuck in their, in their little world, in their little bubble, and they're like, oh, well, that's bullshit. You know, uh, cap, cap. No, dude. You could go ahead as a 21-year-old right now. Become a cop, make six figures, invest your money into a side hustle, make it work for you with ATMs, BTMs, even credit card machines, right? Which we'll talk about in a couple minutes. But at the end of the day, you could become financially free off of this shit. Paul, are you saying if I work hard as a police officer, I can make a lot of money? Yes. Blasphemy. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yes. Yeah. Because and, and people <laughs> tend to tend to look at like the base salary, right? Like a lot of police departments, a lot of law enforcement, it's like, you know, between 50, you know, between 30 to 70K, depending on where you are, right? Like the base salary. But guys, remember, if you do overtime, which most police departments have damn near unlimited overtime, especially if you're like in a inner city, um, you know, with high crime. You can absolutely make six figures. And yeah. for all the people out there that, you, you know, whether you're fed, state, local, uh, I mean, the, a lot of the times the state and locals would make more than the feds because yeah. they, had, they had unlimited overtime. Feds, you don't get overtime. Special agents don't get overtime. The only special agents that get overtime a lot of times are Secret Service or um, Diplomatic Security Service, and that's protection type details. Yeah. But as far as like criminal investigators actually doing cases, FBI agents, DEA, whatever, rarely, if ever, are you going to get overtime. Uh, and except in, you know, certain special situations like a Title Three or whatever. I would but rather take a job. It gives me unlimited overtime than a salary that I have yeah. to depend on. And then you can take day, that bro. money, you can make that six figures, and then you can absolutely use it to funnel to, to funnel that money into a side endeavor like I did, like Paul did, and then you could buy back your freedom through uh, another endeavor. And um, you know, I think if you had to do it again, because I, I see that you basically so you had a system in place, so you made the money, you had kind of a team in place, you bought an ATM, and when you bought uh, when you bought that ATM, you'd have someone go in, install it. I'm assuming they'd pull, put cash in and everything else like that for you yep. as well, right? They set it up. And then you just systematically did this over and over and over again, 30 times. And at that point, you basically were making just as much as you did with the tournament. Once I got to 10 ATMs, I learned, you know, the method. You learned the blueprint. You're like, oh, like that, yeah. that, that moment you come in a crossroad and you're like, oh, shit, this is it. You know? And yeah, all I was doing is just closing the deals. Okay, my team's going to come over here in the next week or so, uh, install the machine, and I'm going to bring somebody to actually load up the cash. Are you good with the contact? Yep, let's do it. Cool. And that's what I would do over and over and again. And where were you selecting, uh, for the people out there that might want to get in this, right? Uh, where, like, What type of locations were you selecting and why did you select those locations? Uh, Cash-driven locations, tourist areas, areas where it was cash intensive. Um, lower income uh, areas as well yeah. did extremely well. Yeah. I mean, everybody cashes their check. They're going to go to the liquor store. Yep. I mean, it is what it is. And there's no yeah. banks there. Let's keep yeah. it real. There's no banks there's in no lower banks income in areas. areas. That's the bank. That's their only access to cash. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, so the unbankable. Bodegas, so. smoke shops, liquor stores. Gas stations. Well, gas stations. Yeah. 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 We always say the unbankable, bro, because there's people that they can't get a bank account. 
I mean, it is what it is. They have to rely on prepaid cards. That's yeah. why these companies that charge major interest make so much money. You remember the the first prepaid card? What was it from Fat Farmer or whatever? Yeah, yeah <laughs> dude, that's old school, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that that was that was the reality of it. I was just like, man, what is this? Why won't people just go to the bank and get a regular credit card? Well, that's the reason why because yeah. the bank doesn't allow them to, so yeah. they have to rely on ATMs. Damn. So let's yeah, say dude. someone's watching right now. They heard all the info. They see Myron's results here. How did they get started? To join your program and get or should help. they start with a cash ATM first or should they start with a Bitcoin I mean I kind of just jumped into it with Bitcoin ATM mm. maybe should they should they jump in with cash because it's a, a little bit of a lower investment up front what do you think well here's what I always tell everybody at the end of the day it has to be for you so if you're more of a passive investor you got to like that okay cool you're making six figs and you could put away low five-figure investment BTM all day mm -hmm. you know time is money and if you can make a lot of money on your job like I was making $80 an hour on overtime being a cop so the way I saw it is when I was in the ATM game, well, it takes a hundred hours minimum to find a decent location. I was just like, dude, why am I going ahead and wasting so much time? I'm just going to delegate to a sales team. So I went ahead, got a call center. That call center started getting me locations, feeding me the leads, feeding me booked appointments. And then I would go in there and just present. Mm -hmm. That's it, right? But it would save so much of my time where I was able to focus on overtime, make $80 an hour. So if you put $80 times 100 hours, that's $8,000 I saved by having delegating that time, mm -hmm. you know? And that's yeah. the way I see it. Majority of time is just like, how can you make your money work for you? Because time is everything, bro. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's why we delegate so many things now in our life at this stage of the game. I mean, I, I, I had to get them, you know, run ATM together because it's so time consuming, but then also you need a good operator. Yeah. You need somebody that knows what they're doing. They're confident and they're able to run a team, yeah. right? You lead by example. Yeah. That way I was able to se separate myself and then go and build another company in the beginning of this year with the credit card machines and stuff but for anybody that's looking for like btms or atms they could simply just go to our website at etmtogether.com um also uh we're also going to do a giveaway as yep. well we're doing a giveaway this month guys so yep. we're actually going to be giving away a free atm to one of you folks nice uh that actually joins our free facebook group you can just click on the link put your name put your uh email your phone number here right and then yep that that little uh, yellow highlight button right there, and then you're gonna be entered into a free giveaway for your f own free ATM, guys. We've given away so many ATM programs, it's crazy. Yeah. So I mean, if if people like you know, again, I know some of you guys might be like, oh, I don't know if I you know want to jump into this full fledged. Like, bro, just get a cash ATM and test it out. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, get a cash ATM. Like, that's lower risk. You you know, obviously, and they take care of it. They'll find the area for you to put it in. So that's gonna say they basically handle the installation they handle finding the location for you they handle setting it up dealing with the vendors all that crap i think people are forgetting if you buy atm yourself you have to go to each vendor and pitch the idea you might just fail because it takes a lot of skill to do that that's, that's not easy to do at all yeah so that's a lot it's, of hard work off you it's hard bro yeah it's hard because some of them they get pitched by like 10 different vendors yeah so why you choose know? you yeah they're gonna be like why choose you and the, and the number one thing that i always tell everybody is you have to be able to educate them build value and then build foundation yeah. you know if i go into a liquor store for example and it's owned by a Hispanic owner, guess what? What am I going to do? You speak Spanish. Hey, como estás? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go build that foundation because yeah. it's going to be a lot smoother for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Of course. And that's what I always tell people. People forget about that. It's just like, use your skill set, use your personal life experience mm -hmm. to build foundation with people, man. Yep. Your network is your net worth. Yep. If Getum wasn't able to build the foundation with me with entrepreneurship, yeah. I mean, dude, Probably still in the department, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if we never just like start talking about entrepreneurship. But once I was out, I was like, hey, bro, you want a job? Yeah. You know, I was going to pay you like three times, four times more than the department. And there you go. Off yeah. to the races. It's like, you, know? you want to talk to niggas? Put on a big yeah. chain. And also, you gotta you gotta adapt, guys. Like I told y'all before, being <laughs> this guy, uh, and you gotta and you gotta be um, flexible, be able to adapt. Because like I told y'all before, like the first location we had, mm. right? I think we put it in like Pembroke Pines or something like that. And um, I love you know, pines, by the way. Yeah, and the the, the vendor was a dickhead. He was yeah. like, at first he was cool, and then we had to switch it up. Like after we had been there for a week or two, so. Like you just got to be able to adapt, and that's what it, what you know. That's what it's about being an entrepreneur. Like not everything is gonna go according to plan, but you know we're able to you know pull the audible and move it to another location. It's down here in Florida, mm -hmm. but uh, that's what happens, guys. So um, and that you guys were fantastic at handling that. Like literally, yeah. like I didn't even notice that. Like you're like, oh yeah, by the way, the vendor's being a dick. You we got to move it, but we already handled it. We already got the guy coming to pick it up tomorrow and everything else like that. So. I'm already thinking for the people skills part. Hey man, you're Hispanic. Bring some tacos. Yeah. They handle that, bro. Like I didn't talk to no vendors. I didn't do shit. Yeah. 
So it's, <laughs> it's, bro, and we it's we've been around the block. Trust me, we've yeah. dealt with yeah. every type of situation. I've gone to barbershops where they cuss me out. They're like, yeah. "Get the fuck out of here! We don't want your fucking ATM." I'm like, "Bro, I'm just yeah. offering you a solution." Yeah. But that's what it is. It's, it's, it's the name of the game, bro. You gotta have tough skin. It's like dating. You're gonna get rejected <laughs> yeah, no matter you know. who you are. Yeah. But keep going on. Numbers it's a, game. It's a numbers game. Absolutely. <laughs> and then um, you have us. You want some chats or? Yeah, I can hit some chats and then we can um, talk about um, the uh, credit card processors. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. What's the chat saying, man? Yeah. Let's see. W what chat they, in the building. You know, you could be anywhere else, but you're here on Monday. Yeah. You, Money Monday. Uh, anonymous L, five bucks. Appreciate that, my friend. Um, and then we got uh, fresh and fit money clips. Uh, shout out to ATM together for sharing our clips. Money clips were up. Watch uh, wealth creation F and F style. We got y'all, man. Sure. And guys, by the way, if you guys got questions, please get them in right now, man. These guys are experts when it comes to ATMs. So there's no one else really. I mean, at least on social media, I know that are c coming close to y'all yeah. as far as like the big corporations. Um, appreciate so if you guys that, got questions when it comes to um, cash ATMs or Bitcoin ATMs. Uh, ask away, man. They're here to answer your question. Um, questions. Um, would ATM work in Alaska? A would a BTM work in Alaska? Not sure on that. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, at the end of the day, if the polar bears are going to use it, it might be one yeah. day. But <laughs> Alaska just doesn't have enough of a population. They're too spread out that I don't think it'd be the best investment. We are yeah. in Canada, guys. Yeah. Don't forget. There you <laughs> go. So, yeah, man, they're going to find a location where there's heavy foot tra traffic, guys. Um uh, Michaka goes. There's always uh, late because Chris keeps sending the wrong address. Like, uh, I address L I Chris. L Chris. Oh, L Chris. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Living reality. Considering there that so many of the highest paying jobs in the U.S. are located in blue states, what do you recommend people do? Seeing as you push for red states so much, thank you so much for the value. Um, well, I mean, try to find a high paying job in a red state, bro. If you have a high income skill, it doesn't matter where you're at. You should be able to find a job. Yeah. So. Um, Goku, or make your money in the blue state and get the hell out as soon as you can. Yeah. Um, hey, Ryan, I was just making jokes. I love, I look at you as a big bro. You save my life with your knowledge. Me joking is a way of me showing love. Okay, no problem. Appreciate that, Goku. Uh, Jesse goes, hi, F and F. I'm 17. I'm done with high school and I'm in college right now after fall. I just have eight more classes to be done with college and trying to make money while I'm in college right now. What do you recommend? Depends on how much money you have to invest, my friend. That's what it always comes down the to. The good part is, Money Mondays, you have so many options. Yeah. You can oh, choose yeah. ATMs, you can choose real estate, you can choose crypto, e commerce crypto, whatever you metals, want. Whatever you want. It's your, your prerogative. Stocks, so, yeah, index stocks. funds, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, we got here, eMoney goes, Myron, how much did you invest a month for Google Ads? How much did we spend on Google, Google Ads? For yours, it's just yeah. 150 a month. Bam. That's yeah. nothing. Yeah. There you guys go. Yeah. Holy. Yeah. And those and those were on the months where I made the most money. Just so you guys know, uh, Fripples, uh, What are the best cash ATM brands to buy? How you send Halo Two and a J Mega G twenty five hundred. The J Mega G twenty five hundred comes with like an actual camera, so oh. if you want more security, that would be the one to go. But the one that we use, the one we love, How you send Halo Two. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then what else do we got? Anything else? Okay, guys. If you again fnfsuperchat.com, if you guys want to get your questions in. Um, oh, okay, so credit card processors. Let's talk about this um, real quick for the people. Yeah, man. So backstory on these credit card terminals. I already saw a couple people going like, bro, there's credit card terminals everywhere. Like, who needs them, right? Yeah. But the backstory on this, guys, basically I, I uh, networked oh. with two nine-figure entrepreneurs out of uh, Los Angeles, Rob Sin and John Sarabia. Mm. They own a pretty decent company called Paybotics. They've generated over like $190 million in the past 15 years that they've been in business. Um, and I actually networked with them at Javier's in SoCal, and it was through a mutual friend. Well, the mutual friend's like, hey, these guys want to meet you. All right. So we have a dinner, and during the dinner, they pitch me. And they're like, all right, dude, check this out. They took out these two terminals, and they were like, you see this? I was like, yeah. Uh, I was like, they're credit card terminals. What's so special about them? Actually, that's the ops. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah, I got yeah, cash yeah, ATM. Yeah, that's yeah, credit yeah, card, bro. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you trying to sell me yeah, on, right? Yeah, yeah. You're going against what I believe in. And they were like, no. Merchant services is a huge business, okay? But there's a special program called cash discount program. And what it is, is, is basically you're just reversing the fees. Instead of the merchant that's paying 500 to thousands of dollars a month in credit card processing fees to allow their clients to actually use credit cards, yeah. it just switches it up where it actually charges the client, but in a very specific way. So it gives the option for the client to actually pay with cash, which then they don't have to pay fees. If they want to pay with credit card, then they end up opting in for the additional uh, credit card processing fee, which is usually about 2.5 to 4%. Yeah. The great thing about this is how you and I make money is that that fee that we just saved them and the actual client's paying 
it goes to us. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're not getting the entire, uh, like I like to say, enchilada. You're not getting the entire 4%, but it gets divvied up. Visa, MasterCard, American Express gets a 1%. Your ISO, which is your independent sales organization that allows you to have the processing network to make these devices actually work with the, with the account, they get like about 1%. So you're left with about like one and a half, two 2%, depending on the account. So let's say you have an account that's pulling in like $100,000 in revenue in California, your local liquor store, any liquor store, any bodega uh, clears over 200K, but just to keep it simple for the folks, 100K, yeah, Yeah, in total sales, 100K, dude, even if you were to get a 1% of that 100K, Imagine Mm. that. And it's through credit card sales. Mm. You're literally making thousands of dollars. You're finding the location. You're basically just providing value. You're educating the folks by telling them that, look, you can save thousands of dollars by switching over to this specific program. And the great thing about this, this only came out a few years ago. And this is what got me. Mm -hmm. I asked them, how how, uh, convoluted is this? Like, Like with ATMs, you could say... ATMs, uh, there's a little bit of saturation now. Okay, mm-hmm. with cash ATMs, not BTMs. BTMs is like the gold rush it's right now. New, yeah. But what's the saturation right now? Like, what are we looking at? He's like, dude, it's only 4% of all business owners across the United States that uses this program. Mm. And it's huge. He's like, we're making money off of this. And it's one of the best programs because you're saving people money. You're saving the, the, the small business owner, the mom and pop shop. So it's a no brainer for them to convert to this. A lot of stores, they're actually doing this already where they're charging you anywhere between four to 20%. I just went to, yeah. uh, I went to Komodo. Mm-hmm. I yeah. got charged 20%. And on the receipt, it's <laughs> they don't play, bro. <laughs> 20%. They- and you know, everybody stiffs you and stuff. But, 20% and they say it's like a, a dining inside fee or something like that. Yeah. You know? Miami is notorious for it's that. It's the magic they, fees. They take, their, they take their 20% up front here. Bro, and it's bullshit. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of people are like, people are not going to pay 25 to 4%. Bro, people are paying 20%. Out here in Miami, people are paying $100 to be VIP valet so you can park in the front. Yeah. I get it. At the end of the day, it's about convenience. Small business owners out there, they're doing this right now. They're converting to cash discount because what's happening is the credit card companies are getting greedy, dude. Yeah. They're getting greedy. Yeah. So a lot of these uh, consultants online that you could, they have different programs, they're actually getting into payment processing. Mm. You know, if you guys ever use, if you guys are a digital marketer, you guys use Stripe, dude. We get hit with 3%. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we we have a way to work around that now. We'll tell you guys after the show. But I'm just saying, people are looking for cheaper options. People are looking to save money, especially with inflation. You can't hire good employees anymore. The cost of just actual rent for brick and mortar shops, it's a no-brainer for people to convert with this. So. I like to be my own guinea pig. Mm -hmm. I did the exact same thing with ATM together, went to 30 locations, then started building out my own online program where I help people do the placement with the ATMs and the BTMs. Exact same concept. I told John Sarabia and Rob Sin, I was like, dude, I want to be the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. So we went ahead. I used the call center that I used to facilitate (laughs) ATM together to land locations for ATMs and BTMs, and we retrained them. We hired an additional 20 call center agents started cold calling everywhere throughout the United States, close them remote, and then we would ship them out pre-programmed already, where basically the settings for the merchant is as simple as setting up your Wi-Fi at home, bro. Yeah. So there's no filling up the cash. There's no none of that, okay? It's very equivalent to BTMs. Mm-hmm. So the whole reason why I even bring this up is because I'm a big believer in diversifying your funds at the end of the day. Yeah. This is why when Get em came on, I was just like, dude, I'm going to take care of you. You're going to run the show for, you know, my, my, my big company, ATM together, but then I'm going to create something else, something else special, especially I just had a, I just had a meeting with these guys and I believe in their vision and their vision. They've been in the game for 18 years mm. they, to they're, they're, they live in Malibu. They're, they're made. They don't have to work they're anymore. Chilling. They're chilling, dude. Yeah, yeah. So they, they bring me the young buck who's hungry and you know, I'm putting in the work. I'm putting yeah. in the work. They're just receiving it. They hire more employees and they delegate. That's that's what people uh, we actually learned yeah. as we grow. You know, yeah. delegation is everything. It really is. So you can't scale up without without doing it. No, you you need a tribe, yeah. man. Yeah. So when it comes down to it, I ended up launching over sixty of these myself. Mm. Sixty of these myself that bring in twenty thousand dollars a month. Mm. So between these. 
twenty thousand dollars a month, my ATMs at fifteen thousand, and then my BTMs at forty five hundred because I got three in San Diego. Okay. okay, three BTMs. Three BTMs in San okay. Diego. Yep. So at the end of the day, when you look at it, what am I doing for that money now? Nothing. Nothing. I'm yeah, sitting nothing. here talking to you. Yeah. 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 I'm here sitting talking to you yeah. guys. You set up the infrastructure to for it to collect money for you. And, and then that's you what there. it's about. Yeah. That's the new American dream. Yeah. You know, it's making your money work for you, but it's also knowing the process on how to do it. Because what you don't know is what you don't know, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you don't get trained up by somebody who's more experienced than you, you're gonna lose in life. If you're narrow minded and you're not, you don't believe in self education, self education is everything to me. Mm -hmm. You know, it started with one uh, five dollar book that showed me just the, the simple concepts of sales and business, and now. Uh, two weeks ago, I just invested over $150,000 instead of buying a Ferrari and um, into a, a mastermind mm -hmm. with one of the biggest, you know, online marketers in the world, you know, from ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson. Yeah. And now I'm going to fly to Idaho, Idaho. What is it? Boise. Uh, I've Boise, never been to yeah. Boise, bro, yeah. but I'm mm -hmm. going there for the first time just to be in the same room with 14 other entrepreneurs that make eight to nine figures so I can learn from them because what we're trying to go, man, we're, we're not content with just eight figs. Yeah. We're trying to go to that 100 million mark, man. Yeah. And we're not, we're trying to go now. We're not trying to wait where wait. we're like 50 or 60, bro. There's so much money to be made out there. It's just yeah. people's eyes are not open. Yeah. And you that's what it comes creative. down to. You got to be, you got to, you got to seize the opportunity. You know, obviously I, I've always said like making money is kind of like a snowball. So like as you make money, it's up to you whether you're going to make more money or, you know, just stay stagnant. And if for you to make more, you have to take that money that you make and put it into other endeavors that make you money on the side. Right. And for me, that's real estate. Also investing with y'all with the with the Bitcoin ATM. And you just got to be able to diversify, like you said, because if you have all your eggs in one basket, it's not a good move. You want to create multiple revenue income streams, man. So um, sp question with this. Yeah. Um, so. Just so I understand the concept fully, so it's basically a credit card processor that mm -hmm. you you know you give to an establish that you you know give to an establishment and it processes their transactions for them. So let's say um, they have people that want to buy with credit cards only. Are you saying that if they they get a discount if they decide to buy in cash? Correct. Okay, so incentivizes them to purchase things in cash and then you end up getting what would have been spent on the credit card uh, processing fee or? so so the cash no you don't get paid if they do with cash oh you get paid if they use credit cards if they use credit cards only here's the good part about this pivot that i did mm -hmm. okay? okay this is all strategy atm together what do we provide cash atms yeah so if we're pushing people to use a cash discount program for ah. credit card terminals guess what they're gonna be like where's your atm it's a double whammy, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, majority yeah, yeah. of our clients, they see the benefit behind it. So you're going back to the people that you have ATMs with and telling them, hey, I can give you this thing that will help you save on credit processing fees. Here's the crazy part about this. <laughs> and it goes back to personal branding because you guys have a huge following. So you guys will understand this. But with me that I wasn't out, I'm not out there like that. Like I don't, I don't go on social media for clout. I could care less about that. No. I go in there for business strategy only. So what I did was I created a wait list. Mm -hmm. Before I launched this actual program, first, I got the results myself. Mm -hmm. Second, I established the actual strategy behind it. The call centers, the <laughs> booked appointments, even what we we provided with you as well, yeah. where we gave I got you my machine over here, guys. By the way, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm uh, also going to get a pig and share my results with y'all as well in a few months. So don't your, worry. Your money should already be in your account, bro. Oh. I, I, I made sure. I was like on the eleventh, <laughs> on the eleventh of the month. I was just like, that's why I was like, Myron, do your paperwork, yeah, bro. Yeah, please, yeah. please. <laughs> but um, so no. stay tuned, guys. I'm going to give you guys my results on this as well. So the way that it worked, it was very methodical, man. It was very methodical. So I created a wait list. I went on a live webinar and I told people like, hey guys, look, you guys know me as the ATM guy, flat out, okay? It is what it is, ATM guy. But now I'm going into a second venture where I actually teamed up with some of the best in Los Angeles and they know what they're doing. You know, they're, they're the best in the game. And the list was insane. And I went in there as a one man team, basically a startup again, man. And I was just like, humble beginnings, I'll go on sales calls, you know, I'll talk to the people and all that, because people like that. Yeah. They like that person-to-person -person interaction, right? So then um, within five weeks, man, we made a million dollars in revenue from the clientele Damn. that nice. we serve on the ATM, BTM side. They came over to the merchant services side and they were like, Paul, 
you do good business. You took care of us. Oh, Paul and Gedham, you took good business. We love you guys. You guys treat us so good on the ATM, BTM side that we believe in your vision. And that's what it comes down to. So what ended up happening? Guys, close to 300 clients in eight months now. Nice. And they use those machines. That, that are now have their own merchant services business, and they're able to go ahead and get as many accounts as possible. We've changed literally a, hand, a handful of people's lives already in the last few months, which is it, it's, it's really the, the big why behind why we do this because we're blue collar guys. Mm -hmm. We come from law enforcement. We come from hard work, bro. So all we know is hard work. So we understand when people come to us and they're like, bro, I work and I grind and I got kids and I'm just trying to find for a second, you know, source of income or something that I could do on the side just like you did. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bro, you have so many choices. We're here to provide you as many things as you want. You know, you could choose credit cards, you could use BTMs, you could do cash ATMs and it all works. It just depends on what do you believe in? What is your vision, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you have the money to invest in up front, you know? Exactly. And it comes down to it, leverage, right? And yeah. that's why I always like to educate people. Look, guys, uh, the, I didn't come from a rich family. I got a good paying job, like yep. we were talking about. Yep. And I just worked a lot. I worked yeah. uh, blood money. I worked uh, the, the Raider games. Uh, small businesses or private businesses like Home Depot, they would hire out the police. And on the weekends, they would need the police as security because they were losing millions of dollars from shoplifting, bro. Yeah. So people don't know that. People yeah. think like, oh man, they're taking advantage of the system. No, guys. A lot of private businesses and nightclubs and <laughs> everywhere, especially in a inner bigger uh, bigger inner cities, they use the police. Yeah, they use the police for their services, and that's where the cash cow comes in for the person that wants to work and save up and eventually become financially free. Yeah. It's a simple process. And I think we've been very clear with the audience and like letting them know, like this isn't like a get rich quick scheme. You're not no. going to become a multi multi millionaire doing this. This is stuff that you do on the side to make passive income. Once you already have a established stream of income, so that you can create more revenues, yeah. uh, re, uh, more streams of revenue, so that you can go ahead and eventually get your freedom back. Yeah. Get him. Realistically speaking, how long does it take for someone to make like, let's say, five k off of like a, a BTM machine? Realistically, you're yeah. going to be looking at about like six to eight months. And okay. you're talking about a month, right? Five k a month. 5K yeah. A month? yeah. I mean, you're realistically like six to eight months. Okay. Yeah. And that's the, that's just buying the machine. You guys handle all the work. Ad spend, right? You'd, ad have, spend, you'd, have, to buy spend. you'd have to buy ad ads as well. So it could be done. It's just that, like, you know, how much are you willing to put back in? Which now that I know, I'm going to put more money into the into running ads. Yeah. You know? Damn. Because I mean, here's the thing. They handle all of it. I didn't even know how much it cost. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I think that's, that's the important thing. So this is kind of something, guys, that you do on the side that's hands off. And I know some of y'all might be, like, skeptical or whatever. And that's fine if you are. Um, but just know that this isn't like a quick, get rich quick scheme. Like you're gonna have to work. You're gonna have to put the, the put the the sweat equity in, get that capital, and then be able to invest and then make that passive income. And that's that's what it is, guys. It takes time to invest and be able to um, make enough passive income to actually like live off of and or quit your job. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Um, oh yeah. Here I can hit some of these uh, chats real quick if people had questions or anything else like that. So basically, the the, the it, it allows them. So you end up saving the company. That you um, credit card transaction fees essentially, Correct. and then that savings is passed on to to you to the actual to clients, the, the client. and then we get a percentage of what we charge the clients. Yeah. So business owners they love this because you got to think about it like this: if you have a very business, a very a busy business, yeah. okay. You're spending a thousand dollars on credit card processing fees, man. Yeah. Thousand dollars a oh, year. Yeah. That's twelve thousand. Just imagine three years. That's thirty six thousand dollars. What can they do with their thirty six thousand dollars? They can make their business grow. Yeah. They can go ahead and pay college tuition. They could buy a brand new car. I mean, that's the vision you have to share with yeah. the business owners because they don't so know. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. I was gonna say for the audience because some people might not know what you're talking about, guys. And you ever, if you've been in like New York City or one of these major cities, and you go into like a bodega or one of these stores, a lot of times they say no credit or you have to have a spend limit or whatever. That is because that they, they, they want to make sure that they offset those tra credit card transaction fees. I mean, even especially a American Express Amex. and Discover, yeah, which yeah. charges some of the highest credit card transaction fees. So, like, whenever you go into business, they say no credit unless you spend ten dollars or above, or hey, we don't accept credit, whatever. Nine out of ten times is to avoid exactly what Paul just described, described to you. Won't even take your Amex cards because of the fees that they yes. have to pay. So that's yes. really good, actually. So this allows the business. It, it's a win-win because the business is now able to accept more forms of payment. Yes, and they're not necessarily getting crucified for using. Um, for allowing you to use a credit card, the, the seller, the sorry, the buyer, the 
The merchant is able to save money. The buyer is able to use their payment method that they prefer, and then you're able to get a percentage of it. So everybody wins in it. Obviously, you get a, a small percentage, but over time, if the business does a lot of money, hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars a month, which is very easy for like certain businesses, yeah. like like you mentioned, a liquor store, easy for them to make hundred k a month. Because remember, that's all transactions. You get a cut of that. Because you know what's funny? Uh, companies that have to uh, pay that charge for the actual credit card fees, they charge you to cover that fee. Yeah. yeah. So now they could charge you less. And still make money. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's a W. Yeah. And a lot of the actual small businesses out there in the United States, the reason why they haven't converted to cash discount is because mm -hmm. you have to think about it like this. Who do they primarily deal with? They deal with big banks. Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America. Why would a big bank reach out to a small business owner, right? When they have all these clients, millions of clients, and say like, hey, we can save you money. They already have the business. Yeah. Right. They yeah. already have this business. Zero so, so everybody now that... This is not out, man. We're like literally the first program to bring into digital marketing. You know, we're bringing the old school business, simple business concept, yeah. and we're mixing it with digital marketing. Yeah, we're you just, see those readers everywhere. Bro, like I see them in Miami, but like you go other places, they don't have readers like that. Yeah, so. it's, it's not just these readers, but we have everything. We have the tablets. We have the online programs. We could do everything you could think of, man. But the main thing is just saving the money. Uh, what was it? Uh, two months ago. I had a med spa owner from uh, Dallas, Texas, flying into Miami Beach, man. He was like, hey, bro, coffee. Uh, I want to talk about merchant. I was like, all right, dude, I usually don't do that, but all right, let's go. So we met uh, Joe and Juice or whatever. And uh, Joe and Juice, man. Yeah. yeah. Amazing yeah. spot. Yeah, amazing spot. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the guy was just like, dude, with the amount of credit card fees that I pay in a month, I can feed a small village. And I was like, well, my man, let me tell you about <laughs> merchant automation. And all in, dude. All in. So now he's set up with this and saving tens of thousands of dollars a month, bro. Because you got to think about med spa. People are dropping money. Yeah. You know, they're getting their Botox. They oh, spend yeah. tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So now he's ever like, hush or card. You want to pay for card? 4%. Yeah. People going to do it anyways. Yeah, they are. Because Especially of his credit service. Cards giving you the convenience that credit cards give you a benefit anyway a lot of the time. They so. want points yeah. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay, cool. Um, all right, so I'll hit some of these chats real, real quick. Um, Let's uh, see what we got here. Uh, we got here. Woody Baby goes, I have 10K with 800 credit score. What is one of the best ways I can leverage my credit to make money? Zero interest credit card. I recommend a American Express Blue Cash credit card. Zero interest for about 12 months. You also get $250 back. Uh, the last time I used it, I don't know if they're still offering that, but I know they're still offering the zero interest. Yeah. Best way to do it is uh, put the business on that, whether you're going to go ATMs, BTMs, or uh, credit card machines, and then go ahead and just pay it off. Pay it off in the 12 months. Yeah. 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 yeah you can literally, simple. yeah, if you got good credit, guys, you can literally open up a, a credit line, use that credit line. To buy your first ATM or second or two ATMs, depending yeah. on how much you want to spend, and then you can wait a year and then make the make the money back and then pay off that credit card. Now, bam, you just create a new revenue source. My first six ATMs was on a credit card. Yeah. I, I mean, I said it on the first show. I don't know if you guys remember, but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the credit card was on the uh, six ATMs uh, credit card, and then the cash that I had in my savings. That's what I used to fill up those ATMs. Uh, mm -hmm. How much money do you need to fill up the uh, ATM? Uh, so when testing it out the first few months, we always say two to three thousand dollars, and then you can take K? it from there. It can hold up to twenty thousand dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, are there is there a certain way you want to break up the denominations? I'm assuming mostly twenty and tens. Standard is usually twenty. They do have dual cassettes where you're able to do tens and twenties. I did that in all my liquor stores, bodegas, and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. um, but mainly twenties is fine. Twenties is mm -hmm. mostly what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see here. What else do we got here? Um, Shit in bricks. <laughs> it goes, I uh, appreciate Money Mondays with the position I'm in. I'm a few, in a few years, I'll own a business I'm working at. This seems to be a good investment to make some money um, on the side. Should I wait to have more money or get it started right away? Yeah, super vague question. Um, it just depends on your cash flow and how comfortable you are in life. At the end of the day, you know, I always tell people if it's not the right time, I'll actually guide you. Um, the biggest thing is just contact one of us, either get them or myself on social media or like, you know, go to our website and then there's contact information as, as uh, there as well. And then we're able to set up like a Zoom appointment. So we're able to talk to you okay. and then you're able to, to tell you like, all right, so what's your cash flow? What are you looking at? And then we'll, we'll guide you the right way because not all money is good money, man. Yeah, I always yeah, tell huge. people like I look out for people yeah. like, dude, I'm about the good business. Yeah. So fair enough. Mm -hmm. And I can tell how you guys work. If someone has a bad experience, you don't want that either. Cause it yeah. comes back on you as well. Mm -hmm. That's good. A hundred percent, man. One yeah. complaint online goes viral and you're, you're screwed. Yeah. So at the end of the day, that's why we're like, Hey dude, like we got to fix this now. Yeah. Get him. How do you do a customer complaints when they come to you? I call them. 
and calm. People aren't used to that anymore. Yeah. Like nowadays, people are used to like uh, just the internet, messaging back and forth and stuff. Mm. I'm gonna pick up my phone and call them. This is my cell phone. It's the iPhone. Here you go. What's going on? What can I do to make this right for you? Wow. And people appreciate that at the end of the day. And you know, sometimes it's a sergeant hat or maybe having old school parents. But at the end of the day, it's like, hey, as long as you're doing your best to make something right, people can feel that when you're hearing them out, yeah. when you're making the situation better for them. At the end of the day, people appreciate that. And you don't see that and in business And you build anymore. a relationship with that person and they trust you. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And they'll text me. They'll text me weeks later. Still got the numbers. I mean, you know, that's why we have two phones. I mean, I have, you know, hundreds and hundreds of clients here that will text me like, hey, get them. I got this question regarding this business. I need help with this. I need help with that. We make it happen. Yeah. No, I mean, they answered all wow. my questions. And when, when, when we had that issue with the vendor, like yeah. they put that so, fire out immediately. Like I didn't even feel it. They're like, oh, yeah, the guy's being a dick, but don't worry. We already got someone coming to take it out. And it's going to be at the new location. Probably will start earning in about two days. Does cool. Amazon call you for your <laughs> issues? No. Yeah. Nope. Yeah, no, nah, definitely not. They don't call you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, man. What else do we got here? Um, uh, Eddie 2X. Uh, he goes, I stopped my uh, ATM because uh, majority didn't want holes on their tiles. Can you help me with a pitch? I had a couple of, of yes, but once I said we need to drill holes they said no Ooh. keep, keep okay. it simple keep it simple tell them you'll fix it holes in their tiles tell, okay tell them you'll fix it and people change their mind very quick Bam. and then you, you say at the end of the day i don't plan on removing this thing i plan on making money with you so why would we be worrying about holes right now there you go All right. Big, okay. biggest thing is clarity man and that's what is everyone's issue that has a, a problem scaling business is like how clear are you on your message with your offer and the way you're explaining and articulating your service majority of the time we could go on a call and say the exact same thing as let's say a new consultant we just employed the thing is the new consultant he doesn't have the life experience like we do mm -hmm. so we're able to read the situation comes back to law enforcement of course. read the situation and then also like get it to the level where we're we're at the same level as the client yes. and be like hey this is how it works do you understand that they're like yeah i really appreciate you explaining it to me like this yeah. you know because there's common objections people have oh, but yeah. obviously if you're a newcomer you don't know so exactly. like holes Oh, don't worry. We'll cover that for you. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Simple. yeah. And nice and simple. And they see that you're yeah. not stressed out. Yeah. yeah. You know, but I, I can almost guarantee you guy was probably stressed like, out. Uh, he was like, oh, yeah. oh, 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 yeah. oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Let me get back to you on that. It's uncertainty, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, okay. What else do we got here? Um, and guys, get your questions in, man. These are the ATM experts here, man. So if you're thinking about doing one on the side or if you have questions about ATMs in general, these guys definitely know what they're talking about. I mean, you mentioned the two the two ones to get. Were the two ones that you mentioned earlier? Like, I don't even know what those were. Like, G gazebo? Yeah. What'd you like say? The, oh, the, the Hayu Sun Halo 2. And then the Gen Mega G twenty five hundred. Yeah. Sounds like a video one. game. Halo two. Yeah, that was right. one of my favorite games back Bless in the day. Bless you. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, red states have good paying jobs too. You just got to be a man because most are blue collar. That's true. Okay. Um, <laughs> blue, blue collar is coming back. Can we refer you to the uh, refer you the lead for the location where we would like our ATM at? Yeah, we do it all the time for our clients. So once you become a client with us, uh, depending on what package you want, we'll actually go and actually cold call them for you. Oh, okay. So, wow. Yeah, right. pretty simple. So if they have a location of mine, y'all will go ahead and oh, handle yeah. it for them. All, all right. right. Uh, what else we got here? So pretty much put ATMs in place with the niggas around. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, I promise you, I didn't want to say it, but that's what I was thinking. That's my, that's my nigga, bro. That's my dog right there, bro. I swear to God. Shout out to you, bro. Oh, oh, shit, man. He's hey, right. Hey, hey, hey. hey. To, 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 to go back on that one, Myron, real quick. Yeah, is, go ahead, please. BTMs, ATMs, you know where they do phenomenal at? Karen, I said yes. Okay. Really? Mexican meat markets, bro. Yeah, like, there you wow. go. Yeah, because you got Western Union and the Mexican meat markets. Yeah. So, so yeah, they do okay. cash. There you so go. you're saying... Yeah. In general, low income niggas yeah. and then low income Mexicans. Precious dog, so pretty much. He said it, not me. Uh, Bro, uh, next one. Oh. And this, this is all our locals ninjas here. Yo. Northwest Tucker goes, it's unbelievable that you guys bring on such incredible real world oh. guests for free. Tapped into Amazon FBA with KT already, but the CC merchant service sounds like a freaking gold rush. Is it available in all lower 48 states? Yes. Yeah, it is. Um, but see, that's the beauty of Money Mondays, bro. If you want to make money on the side or business, guess what? We got options for you. Yeah. ATMs. Yeah. Merchant services or Amazon FBA. Whatever you need, we got you guys. Yeah, we there got y'all, man. Uh, it's uh oh, not 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 yo goes. 
Paul, when you moved to Florida, did you move your LLC to Florida as well? Mm. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell nice. yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm still going to get hit for half the year from California, but, you Once know, we're, 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 yeah, we're, we're working on it. And mm. like I said, we're, we're going to be down the street from you guys yeah. November 1st, man, which is going to be kick ass. Man, nice. If you knew how much we paid in taxes for last year, you'd be shitting your ass, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, need, I, I need to hear this. Because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you after, after the show. Because I'll tell you guys, you're going to be like, what bro like, like it was it was stupid bro like i never thought that i would ever have to pay that much it was crazy wow yeah fucking crazy man yeah. california next year paul get some money back uh what else we got here um we got uh darsh goes i own an hvac business and we use chase for credit card payments and they charge us four percent but everything online like we don't carry uh the machine with us to customer houses what's something you have i could use i got you so this is uh the valor vl 100 we have another model, um, model called the valor vl 110 it actually comes with a sim card it comes oh. with a re remote battery and we usually sell it to like uh you know, uh, vendors, mobile guys. contractors, mobile guys. Yeah. Uh, they have an entire fleet. They could give one to each one of their guys. Once you become a client, it is a five figure investment to become a client with us. But after you could buy these for 300 bucks from us. Uh, yeah. Which wow. is amazing because people can scale so fast. Yeah. I mean, we've had a couple of people scale with us already where they've made more than what their, their wife, investment was. no, well, their wife and they actually made from their actual nine to five. And then they came to work for us because we're like, oh, bro, sure. you're so good at like this. You're so good at selling this. You need to come work for us, man. Mm, okay. And that's what, it, that's what it is. Your network is your net worth. We've, we've hired clients yeah. like, dude, that's majority of our mm -hmm. staff. Yeah. Oh, it's like previous wow. clients, man. If you nice. do well at what we actually do and you love it and you have the passion for it and you want to work with us, hey, we're, we're hiring all day. Okay. We're, we hire everything. So, okay. all right. And nice. they believe in the mission too. That's good. Uh, yeah. Got to get in the game. Yeah. Let's see here. Uh, I got 20K saved in California. Is that enough to start a machine? Sorry if I missed it listening while working. So, so 20K, uh, he lives in California. Is that uh, is that enough to start? So uh, first question I would ask, ATM, BTM, but either or, yeah, we, we can make it work for you. Bam. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Truth702Seeker, I've been doing merchant services for 14 years. Love dual pricing, AK cash discount. Shout out to FNF. Keep doing nice. God's work, Janet. Okay. I got you, bro. There Shout you go. out to you, bro. He's aware of uh, the situation as well. Flying right there. Great knowledge from this episode, as always. Would you guys consider getting former San Francisco Giants legend Aubrey Huff on sometime? He was blacklisted from his former team and is incredibly RP. Uh, I don't uh, know we, who he is, we but we can look it up. It up. Um, okay, and then uh, someone here, Ham Holland, goes, how much would our split be? Uh, the split would be so you let's say you charge four percent, uh, you would get roughly about one to one point five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you have um, to pay the processing network, which is your ISO, your independent sales organization, mm -hmm. which basically those that's the business that I teamed up with to provide me the network, to provide me the terminals, to provide me the actual high level support. Mm -hmm. That's why when you which come, they don't have to worry because you've already taken care of that. Exactly. Yeah. And then from there you have to pay Visa, Mastercard, yeah, you know, course. Amex. They have to get their cut, bro. Yeah. I mean they're the have big to. boys, right? Yeah. So yeah. And then and then they get roughly one on one point after everything's said and done they get. <sighs> but yeah, I mean if you're putting it at a good business is generating, you know, guys, keep in keep in mind like a lot of these businesses. Are making easily a hundred thousand dollars a month in Easy. total revenue, Easy. so you can make a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a month for nothing. Yeah, Just, I think that's the biggest thing is that you're making money for doing nothing. Well, you're setting up an infrastructure to collect money for you. Also, think about it like this, man. Like, how much in a rental property? And I know because you guys got a lot of rental properties. Yeah. Like right now in 2023, <clears throat> right? Which a lot of people are calling the American trap because they can't even afford their own house. Yeah. Right. It's um. How much are you making in rent, like from just a tenant, like a one bedroom right now? Yeah, I mean, yeah. How, yeah, much, no, how, how I, much are you I, making? If we're gonna look on cash on cash returns, yeah, the cash on cash returns from this are higher than that of real estate. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's less work. And it's, it's and it's less, less work and less headache, repairs, less capital, renovations. I'm putting in, you know, with all my real estate deals, I'm putting in at least a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars on each deal that I do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, there's back end benefits to real estate, but if we're gonna talk strictly cash on cash, how much money you're making? Yeah, the the bitcoins are the the, sorry, uh, the ATMs make more money from a strictly cash on cash perspective. And also, you don't need credit to get it. BTM. Yes, or ATM. you're not dealing with a or bank to get a loan. You're a not machine, dealing with yeah. credit. If your credit score sucks, you can still get it. So, so you bypass all that. 
yeah. for example. This is something estate. that you can do if, you're, if your credit score isn't up to par to get a good, and remember, interest rates are higher now, yeah. 8%, 9% it's damn tough. near, to get into the real Holy. estate game, and you need more capital, right? Mm. I, and I tell you guys all the time, real estate is more about the auxiliary benefits that come alongside it, you know, taxes. equity, taxes, all that other stuff, right? The cash flow is just, you know, the, ch the cherry on top. But if you're just focusing on cash or cash returns, you want to get into something, you don't have necessarily $100,000 or you don't have the credit score to go ahead and pick up a real estate property, this is a fantastic way to segue in and start getting your money to work for you. I would wager if you do Paul's technique, you get the uh, American Blue Cash card, right? You max that out. You get your, your ATM machine. Yeah. You pay it off once you make some money as well. Because it's a year then, where they defer it. A lot of these credit cards, they'll give you 12 months, 18 months, guys. Zero interest. Inter zero interest. So you're able yeah. to go ahead and damn near start a business on it, right? And then you're able to recoup some of that money back in that period of time. Yeah. And then you keep building up your credit, and then you go buy property after. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. So, so when you look at if I was, let's say, 21 or I was like a fresh investor or like a newbie entrepreneur, maybe yeah. I'm watching this and I'm a nine to fiver and I'm yeah. like, dude, like, yeah, let's, you know what? Let's walk them through someone here that might be watching this. They might have 10K. They might have 20K. They're a nine to fiver. They're making 50K per year. Yeah. Right. Let's say they got 10K saved. How should they go about doing this? Uh, step by step. How's their credit? Let's say, let's say the average American, let's say their credit score is 650. 650. 650? 650? Average American, yeah, somewhere 650. Okay, so if somebody was looking to work with us, we do have uh, OPM, other people's money. Okay. So we have funding options. We have a funder uh, affiliate company that actually allows people to get business funding for our programs oh. that we worked with them for the past three years, man. So oh, it's shit. phenomenal. A lot of people leverage that. And then they'll go ahead and they'll get the funding as long as they have a minimum credit score of uh, 620, uh, make $30,000 a year. Um, been at the job, the W-2 job for like three months. Oh, wow. Um, and they'll get full funding for our program. They'll get up and running and then they could go ahead and use that cash, whether it's cash ATMs, they could go ahead and fill up their ATM or they can use that cash reserve and then buy it at wholesale from us and keep scaling. Um, that would be on the cash ATM side. Same thing for BTM and then same thing for merchant. We have it across the board for all three wow. of so the services. Wow, so you actually give people the ability to uh, to get funded through a, 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 through a middleman. Correct. Wow. We also just linked up with a law firm that um, can actually um, liquefy credit cards now the legal way, okay. not illegal way. Because okay, <laughs> okay, yeah. we're like, wait a minute. You're yeah, like, yeah, huh, yeah, yeah. Put, put the Fed uh, yeah, cap yeah, on. Yeah. But no, uh, l total legitimate um, law firm. We were like, okay, what is this? And I met him through uh, my network, funding consultant. Actually lives here in Miami, Andrew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, really great guy, but he helps people get anywhere between fifty to $150,000 in business funding, which oh, is wow. amazing. Yeah. I don't know how he does it. But um, that, that's another thing. You guys can DM me on social media if you guys want, and Damn. I'll shoot you his info. But what he connected us, we all had lunch at uh, Pura Vida. We had oh, some yeah. smoothies, right you know. That's yeah. a good spot, food, too. Yeah, yeah. That's a good spot, right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, we had lunch there. And uh, Andrew's like, hey, bro, so uh, how can I help you? I was like, bro, do you have another method besides uh, our funding company that we have where we're able to leverage? Because a lot of people come up with us, hey, I have a credit card. I want to use it. Um, so how can I leverage that? Okay. He's like, oh yeah, I'll just connect you with a law firm and then they'll go ahead and they can actually charge them, uh, liquefy their credit card and give them cash if they want. Nice. Shit. And I'm like, bro, that's like unheard of. Like, yeah. what is this? There are some credit cards that let yeah. you do it, but like, yeah, there's not many. Like I know Bank of America has a credit card that lets you, you know, um, ch you know, use a transaction for 4% and then you're able to take the balance and yep. put it into your checking account, et cetera. Mm. But you would need a Bank of America account. It's only certain credit cards that let you do it. But yeah, the fact that they're, they there's other... You can do it through them. That's another option as Third well. Third-party source, man. Yeah. Your network is your net worth, right? Yeah. And that's what I tell people when Sheesh. they will. So there's really no excuse to not get in because like, yeah. you can no. literally, y'all have, and, and the fact that you guys have people that are willing to lend your clients money to get involved in this tells you mm -hmm. that it's a pretty stable business. That's well, crazy. We have to yeah. have, number one, the social proof. We yeah. had to have positive reviews. And then we had to have basically the infrastructure fully built out. They needed to see everything like documents, paperwork, LLC, make sure yeah. we're legitimate. And then they're like, okay, we'll give you the blessing. Yeah. And then after that, we were like, awesome. So someone can get private funding. Wow. Exactly. That's crazy. Damn. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. So if you guys are, I mean, to me, it sounds like it's like a no brainer at this point. Because even if you don't have the capital to get in, like you guys have people that will fund it for them. Oh, so yeah. no. uh, what's the, how, how long do they have to pay it back? Uh, it's going to range depending on their actual background. So okay, okay. Depend, depending on your payment history, depending on your work history, everybody varies. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, anything else here? I'll close this thing out. Uh, cool. Uh, w Show. Yeah, yeah, man. Definitely. So, um, uh, 
last question for me, though, actually, for you guys. Um, what is something you've learned from working as a police officer, working in corporate America, but being a business owner now? You can tell the, the audience now, like, for example, how to be successful, what you learned through that process. Oh, yeah. You you gotta, blessing. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest lesson I learned is you got to have skin in the game. You got to be comfortable being uncomfortable because at the end of the day, don't get caught up in the corporate trap. Mm. Work five more years, work 10 more years. And all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, man, I'm 60 years old. I'm retiring. I barely yeah. got any savings. And my savings ain't going as far as it used to be. Right. Yeah. So the first thing I'd say is step into the comfort zone, get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's what they said. The first thing they said to us in the Marine Corps, same thing they said to us in law enforcement. And that's the same thing I take with me in corporate America. So. Mm. Yeah. I mean, my, my answer, bro, is going to go back to what, what I gave you earlier. And you yes. were like, oh, man, that's, 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 a, that's a beautiful cover. <laughs> Just like... I didn't say that part. That's just something else, but it's funny. We'll do it on camera. Oh, no, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. Yeah. Guys, so um, it's surreal. It's surreal. I actually put an IG story out like two days ago, and I got some pre-orders of my book that's actually launching in uh, the next two weeks. Nice. I'm actually traveling to New York. They're going to put it on NASDAQ right there oh, wow. uh, for 24 hours. So, you know, I got to go take the social of proof course, and all that course, jazz, of right? Of course, yeah. But anyways, man, it's surreal because six years ago, I bought my first entrepreneur book. Oh, wow. And it was like yeah. five bucks. Um, what was the I, book? It was Digital Millionaire. Mm, yeah, okay. Digital Millionaire. Um, six years ago, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something, man. It's surreal to now have my own book where I'm basically showing step-by-step step of exactly what I did. From A to Z, showing my journey from law enforcement to ATMs, to BTMs, to merchant services. But then here's the biggest takeaway from this book. It's going to change your mindset. Yeah, mm. It's going to change your mindset. Because as you guys know, Mindset is everything. And it, it goes back to your question. What did I learn the most from being a cop to going to corporate to going to entrepreneurship? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, people that don't know you or even your closest ones, they're going to count you out. Yeah. They're going to count you out. The only person you could count on is yourself. Okay. So you have to push you. And what's meant for you is what's meant for you. You know, no one could take away from that. No one could take away when I had the vision of, dude, you know what? I'm going to do ATMs. Going from my ex-girlfriend saying that was stupid because I was a detective. Mm -hmm. Going from my mom saying, oh, isn't it saturated? Well, you're a cop. Why don't you just go promote to be a sergeant? Yeah. To now actually making them believers because they actually see the social proof. Yeah. And now you're yeah. an overnight success. Now everybody wants to come to you and be like, how did you do it, bro? How did you do it? Bro, you don't remember those times where you saw me like actually putting in the work, like saying like, hey, I can't go out. Hey, I can't go and go on that trip because I want to go ahead and actually yeah. save my money and, you know, invest into the small business. Yeah. And you know how people will, will love to hate on you and say, how's our little small business going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's going real good. How's your nine to five now? Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the way I see it, man. So for anybody that's watching this, guys, we're about the nine to fivers. We're about the average American. That's why I called the, the book from blue to digital gold, the new American dream, because the new American dream is freedom. Yeah. It's, it's not just being a millionaire who gives a fuck about being a millionaire. Yeah. If you're a slave. It, yeah. yeah. The money gives you the options to do whatever the fuck you want. But at the end of the day, it comes back to fulfillment. Yeah. What is going to fulfill you? Because I know a lot of fucking wealthy people that are unhappy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a bunch of them here in Miami, bro. A bunch of them, dude. He's like, fresh fresh, fresh like, dude, all right, let's talk about this, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, but it's 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 real. Mm. It's real. A lot of people are depressed out there right now because they see all the bullshit in social media. Mm. Oh, fuck, I don't use social media for fucking personal use. I use it for business. Yeah. You know, people are like, why are you showing off? Why are you showing off? No, nah, dude, that's a fucking victim mindset. Motivation. I'm not fucking showing off. I'm showing you the transition of what the fuck I went through working 60 to 100 hour work weeks, busting my ass at Raider games and shit, you know, and then fucking and going ahead and transitioning, investing that money into something that I believed in, made it grow, started another business, hooked up my boy that believed in me, made him a millionaire, and then fucking now we're in Miami, we're fucking traveling wherever we want. Yeah. And going to Tootsie's. <laughs> and going to Tootsie's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was great, man. I love that. Yeah, no, Thank man. You, um, that was good. But no, man, uh, definitely, it's always great to have you guys here, man. Um, if you guys want to get involved, man, obviously, um, you know, check them out, um, ATM Together. Uh, I showed you guys my results. Like I said, super transparent. Yep. Obviously, it's ups and downs. It's not going to be, you know, it would be a scam if I was making thousands upon thousands a month. But uh, I showed you guys what it is, man. You can definitely make some passive income with it. And uh, yeah, guys, we'll be back here uh, with some, some girls. girls here in about an hour or so. Yeah. Uh, check them out. Oh, there's shots? 
Oh, okay. Let me let me fill these read these real quick. Okay, WFNF uh, w, Super Guts. Uh, w Money Monday. I heard that some of these BTMs have advertisement toppers, which models have these features, and how much money do these ads produce, and how much would a machine like that cost in total? Thanks. That's for a BTM. Yeah, for the BTMs, they do. So we, we do that because we sell advertising Toppers. space. You might have like, you know, Turkish Airlines, Coca-Cola, different things like that. Yes. You can make up to about 100 bucks a month. Just depends on what type of ads are being sold on there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Is that the last one? No. Uh, Paul looks like MLD stunt double. <laughs> okay. Uh, Who is that? Yeah, it's one of our buddies. Uh, oh. How much would you guys say you should have saved to get started with the merchant services? 10K Carnesias were my first thought. Shout out to all my paises out there. <laughs> Uh, how much is he saying? How much should you have? Is that the question? Yeah. How much should you have? Yeah. It's it's gonna be around that ballpark. Okay. So 10, just 000. just come to us. We'll we'll chat. We'll make it happen. All Carne right. Seria. Uh, and then Spanx. any plans to set up BTMs in the Philippines, English speaking country, mall culture, and many foreign tourists? So so we're going to uh, Canada, then Spain, then Mexico. But yeah. hit us up. Might make it happen out there too. Expanding. Okay. Uh, yeah. What are your packages? Check us out at atmtogether.com and merchantautomation.com. We have quite a few, and I don't want to take up like another hour. No, <laughs> Just no explain the packages, man. So no, check it no out. No worries, man. Um, and they're flexible, guys, uh, with you know working with you. They definitely will yeah, work with you depending will. on your situation. Question for the guests regarding the merchant services. The hard terminals are great, but is there an e-commerce option with the same features where the consumer would be charged the credit card fees up front? So we can either match what you currently have or see what we can actually, uh, as far as like saving money for you. Okay. So just check us out, Merchant Automation, talk to one of our consultants, and then they'll go ahead and just walk you step by step on what you currently have and what we can match or actually do better for you. That's good. Cool. Uh, is BTM cash on cash return better than Merchant? Oh man, that's 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 that's, good that's, question. Uh, that's 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 my two children right yeah. there, man. I can't yeah. say either or, favorite. but they're both great investment guys. At the end of the day, when it comes down to it, diversify. Okay, yeah. so and how much money you have to invest, it comes down to that, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. Exactly. Or if because you can, just do both. Yeah. Why not? If you can, most people do. Yeah. yeah. Most people do. If they do BTMs, they'll go into merchant. If they do merchant, they go into BTMs. Yeah. So. So it really comes down to how much capital you have and what you want to start with or what you feel more comfortable with. Um, anything else? No, we're done. All right, cool. Guys, hope you enjoyed that one, man. This is a great Money Monday. Uh, yep. And stay tuned, guys. I'll be sharing. I got my box here. So I'm going to be with the, with the merchant stuff here very soon as well, man. So y'all will be able to, um, you know, I'll share my results with you guys here in a few months with that as well. As usual, being very transparent. Uh, yep. Guys, uh, their social media, um, you guys want to drop uh, your Instagrams real fast? People? Yeah, it's going to be at get em Y and then at. Paul Alex and I actually have two Paul Alex and the Paul Alex but be, guys uh, before we cut out I just wanted to let you guys know free giveaway we're doing yes. it for both companies right. we're giving away a free ATM if you guys go to that link uh, just sign up for the free Facebook group get them's actually gonna do a live presentation yep. uh, tomorrow and also with one of our funding uh, actual companies with yep. Alex um, and then I'm going to do a live presentation on Wednesday regarding merchant services. And I might bring in one of my uh, business partners who's a nine figure entrepreneur on this, John Sarabia, Rob Sin. And they're going to go ahead and educate you guys more on merchant services. So, best of both worlds, guys. At the end of the day, we're giving you options. Like I said, also check out the book, 15 bucks, guys. It may change your life, just like yeah. that book that I bought six years ago did. Well awesome. said. All right, guys. We'll, we'll be back with some girls here in a little bit, man. Hope you guys enjoyed that one, man. And uh, hit them up, guys. There's many ways to make money here. Money Mondays. Catch you guys. Peace. Peace.